and welcome back. Now today we're going to talk about a three axis accelerometer and gyroscope module, namely this one here. And as you can probably just about make out on there, upside down, it says MPU 6050. Now there are other ones available. Uh, and in fact, you can see one at the back there. It's a different make altogether. But uh, I've decided to stick with this one because it was easiest to demonstrate what uh, an accelerometer and gyroscope module will actually do for us. So straight on with the demo first, I think, um, just so that you understand what this little device does. As perhaps the name indicates, the gyroscope might give you a clue as to um, what it does. And the fact it's it's blue tacked to the top of this spirit level will also give you an idea of what it's supposed to be measuring. Now, this isn't something that I'm expecting you ever to do because it's not my code. It's just demo code out there on the internet, but it requires two sets of development languages. Not something perhaps an Arduinoite might take on readily. Let's have a look at the demo first, and then you'll see exactly how this thing stacks up. Right, here we are um, looking at my monitor. Now you can see this, this picture over here. Um, it looks a little bit plain like, and that's exactly what it is, even though the sketch says it's uh, a teapot. Maybe originally it was a teapot, I don't know, but it's a plane now, which gives a good example of what this does. Now, if you notice what happens to that picture when I pick this thing up, you'll see that it does in fact move just like a little balsa wood plane. So you've got effectively three axes and six degrees of freedom. So you've got up and down like that, that's two. Then you've got left and right like that. And then you've got a spin on the Z axis, which is like that. So it's a little bit tricky to do like this, but if I turn it, you can obviously see it turning as well. And the movement there, I mean, it's amazingly smooth. That's probably why they use this as a demo, I don't know. Um, but the chap who wrote both the library that allows this and this demo code, it's Jeff Roberg actually, as you can probably see in that sketch. Um, he obviously knows this thing inside out and then some because it's a, a wonderful little demo sketch and you can probably adapt this sketch if you really wanted to, to do other things. You may notice this um, IDE here as well. Now this is in fact um, a Java language under here. This isn't um, C++. And yet, if you look at it in its um, layout and makeup and everything, it is so similar to what we're using in the Arduino world for our, our C++ language, you'd, you'd, you'd think you've just stumbled across a newer version of it. I'm guessing that's where Arduino took their inspiration from to create the Arduino IDE. In fact, when you create a new one, it actually comes up with the same sketch. Look, if you say new, and then I'll bring this over into that monitor so you can see, here we are. And look, it says sketch, blah, 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 blah. See, just like we are used to in the Arduino world. And it has its little serial monitor window down the bottom here as well. Look, you can see all these funny characters coming up. Now, how does this work? Well, very briefly, I'll, I'll show you how this works. This Arduino here is generating this output that you can see down the bottom. All right, in this in this window, let me make that a little bit bigger. So you can see, I mean, it's rubbish characters. We can't read them as human beings because that's the the format of the signal that this sketch requires. Um, so it's not particularly important from our point of view. Apart from that, it is generating that output on the USB port, and this sketch is simply reading that USB port. So in my instance, it's COM5, and it's reading the data from this little device. So effectively, you've got two sketches running, one that's embedded in here, that's generating that signal, and then one on my desktop, which is this one here, that's running a bit like the Arduino sketch would, except it's not embedded in anything. It's running within Windows or Mac, runs on both, or Linux, it says here. This one's generating this, this display by reading this data in here. So that's how the two things work. Now, of course, that's a little bit more complicated and it's not something I want to go into, but it does show you exactly how wonderfully, um, well, accurate this little device is. And uh, it follows my movements exactly. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. So there we are. So now I'm not uh, proposing that we build anything like this going forward. But I will say we can generate something out of this in the Arduino world we can make a start on and from there you can build upon that. Now, of course, the most obvious use for one of these is when you've got um, a, a, a drone 
or potentially an aircraft, model aircraft that is, because this could be used and is used, in fact, all over the place as a sort of self-stabilizing unit. So if you have your drone, you put this on top of it with an Arduino, and then your Arduino controls the motors and stuff on your drone to make sure that it levels itself and doesn't start moving about. If it starts, you know, your drone starts twisting, well, you can detect that, obviously, like the picture shows you, and you can apply um, the correction to bring it back into line. So that's where they're used a lot. And I'll show you a couple of videos or links to the videos where I discovered a lot of information about this far more than I want, I must admit. But if you want to know about how these work and how you can apply them into drones, those two videos you definitely need to look at. Let's um, switch from this rather elaborate setup here and this lovely picture of a balsa wood plane and go back to the Arduino world and see exactly what we can make out of this. So this is a picture of what an MPU 6050 is trying to tell us. Okay, you have an X axis through the middle here, a Y through the front to back axis, and the Z, which is the yaw, which is the, uh, the spin, basically. Now, that's okay. So you can understand um, that you've got the three axes, and my little unit here, this was sort of representing this, you can understand that by going upwards and backwards, we can get a value in left and right. But as I've discovered, it's not a simple matter of saying, well, one's an X, one's a Y, because if you were to measure an angle like that, say of 45 degrees, but then slide it round the other way, the maths becomes a lot more complicated. And whilst this is true in its simplest and perhaps purest form, you do have to take into account the angle of the actual device relative to Earth to work out exactly what all these figures are. Which brings me on to the links that I mentioned before. If you want to know anything about this and how you can calculate raw values so they actually mean something, these are the two videos you really need to look at. So this is the, the video. It's done by uh, Jupe Brocking. And he's obviously a, a drone flyer, as he shows you here. And this video explains the well, I hate to use the word the maths, but I guess at the end of the day it is. But simple maths that if you're into quad flying and you want to know how to create one of these auto leveling gyroscopes, this is the video to watch. There's a part one, which is beginning here, and there's a part two. Now I've watched these somewhat belatedly in my experience, I have to say, but at least I managed then to find out where the code that I was using actually came from, because I have some code that was sort of scattered about the internet. And I wondered why the person who was um, giving out that code wasn't really explaining it that well. Well, now I know because it's in fact Dupe Brocking's code. He wrote it um, and which I've been using. So, but I'm using that now as a black box really. Having found out what it's doing and why he wrote it in such a way, I'm thinking, right, we as Arduino it's might use that ourselves, but we certainly probably invent that. Kudos and credit where it's due. These are the two videos you need to look at, part one, part two. I'll put links in the video down below. Right, let's move on to what we can do with this. Uh, well, what I can do with it in a very fairly limited manner. Right, so here we are. I've loaded up some uh, test sketch code that, um, yeah, that bit I did write, but the underlying calculations is the bit that uh, Duke wrote. And I'm glad that I found out where it actually came from. So what this is now is the electronic equivalent of this spirit level. And as you can see, when I tilt it left or right, the lights go on on the, uh, the pixel display there, the Neo pixel display. Um, now, initially I thought, well, perhaps we, this could actually be implemented as a true spirit level, if nothing else for a, a novelty value. Although quite frankly, the little bubble in the spirit level there is guaranteed never to go wrong. Um, works everywhere in the whole world and doesn't require any batteries. So can we actually improve on nature? Probably not. But what we can show is that if you're into gyroscopes or robotics, for example, you might want, as an example, to know in your robotic arm, when have I reached 45 degrees, say? Okay, now I've set this sensitivity up actually to about four or five degrees at the moment. So it doesn't take a lot for me to get full scale on this. But if you were to change the code and have it at 45 degrees, you could easily detect that. In fact, let's look at the code and just, just do that for a bit of fun now. So here's the code. Um, this is the gyro function. So all these here 
are what um, Dupe actually wrote. Now I started to tidy them up a bit because I wanted to understand them better myself. But I thought, well, actually, I'll just let them go now and stick them into this header library out of the way. This is the code that um, I wrote just to prove to myself that I could I could write something with that data, having got the raw data converted into something a little bit more useful, as in proper degrees. And as you can see from the debug window or the serial monitor down below, this is now actually displaying the degrees it thinks it's at. Now, center, when it's center, it goes to green. And I say center, well, okay, it says down here at the moment 0 0.35, 34, 33. There's a little bit of drift, but not so much that you would, it goes out of true uh, calibration. It starts drifting one way, then it comes back again. And that's an acceptable part of what the gyro does, apparently. It's, it's, it's fairly standard. So what this does then, it um, reads that raw library. Basically, it configures that MPU 6050. Uh, calculates the offset. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that when you initially start up, it it might be not quite straight or um, level. And what it actually does internally is say, well, if I'm getting certain forces in this three axis model, so this one here, if I can detect that there's a force in a certain direction, I know which way must be down. So it can basically calibrate and self level. As I say, if you want the absolute details, watch those other two videos. So what else does it do? Well, I'm using the, the fast LED library to light up my strip of pixels here. These are basically two strips of eight. Uh, I've joined them together underneath, as you can see, just like that. And now if you want to know how to use the Neo pixels, you need to look at my TV simulator video that uses a circular one, but it's just laid out in a different pattern. It works in exactly the same way. So in the original NeoPixel demo that I had the circular display in, it just read the value from the pot and as you turned it up, more and more would light up. And in this case, more and more light up in different colours. Um, as I mentioned many times before, the LEDs look rubbish on camera. I mean, they look basically white in the middle with just a glow of colour on the outside. Um, whereas in real life, of course, they're, they're beautiful. So that's what we did. Now, the tricky bit of this new code with this is to say, all right, I've got a value, but I want the center one illuminated and then one's either side, depending on what sort of value I've got. So that is a little bit tricky and I had to map some values. And to be quite honest, I had a terrible cold while I was doing this. So that's my excuse for the rubbish code that you're about to see on screen. Okay. So the code then, just uses those near pixels. I've got 16 LEDs, but I've had to not use the top one because I wanted an equal number either side of the green center one. So you can't have an even number with one in the middle. So I've basically told it, let's not use that top one. We just use 15, one in the middle, and then you've got seven either side. And when it's centered, it goes green. And when you go slightly off, it changes to blue and however many reds, depending on the angles. Right, let's look at where I put those angles in then. So here's where we calculate the handles, and that's calling the underlying code from dupe. Okay, his calculations. So basically calling that, which I'll put into these this function library up here. And I've said, right, let's limit it to 10 degrees. Well, okay, if we wanted to limit that then to 45 degrees, who knows, in your robotic arm, you might have a need for that. All you've got to do is change that and recompile. So let's recompile and you'll Watch the window down here because that does some things at startup that are required. So the first thing it does when it loads up is to take about 2000 readings, average them and use that as a sort of a baseline so that whatever values you get out at the beginning, it considers those to be the at rest and not moving anywhere type um, values. So it does that for about, I don't know, takes about three or four seconds, I think, before it can uh, work out exactly what's what. Then it, so it uses those offsets, if you like, from the underlying values that we're gonna be displaying on this window. So where it says true angle, 0.63, it's already subtracted the sort of nonsense value that's come out before. Right, so that's running now. So now we're saying 45 degrees. So now if you look at the little window down here, as I move now, I can move a lot more See, so 45 would be about there. 
I guess that's about right, isn't it? And in fact, the window says 38. So let's move it. Well, there we are. Well, we had it at 45 just for a second. There's 45. And the other way, exactly the same. There's 45. And back again. So you can see that it is pretty accurate. Well, it's more than pretty accurate, actually. Given that Dupe uses this exact same device and the exact same calculations to make sure his drone doesn't fly off into the distance somewhere, it just hovers exactly. It's, it's pretty damn good, I've got to say. Now, I'm not going to discuss the rest of this code in too much detail because, after all, this is a video about the MPU 6050, not about the NeoPixels. But this, this code here that I'm just scrolling through now just determines where we've we've got the actual angle from you know left or right and from that determines which leds we're going to write up one point that you do have to remember about neopixels is that you have to tell each one in a loop whether to light up or not and what color it is so we can't just say light up the middle one and then light up some left or right depending on what this says we've got to do all the working out first and then display them all even if they're not lit you have to say this LED, which I'm now talking to you, the third one in, say, um, its color is black. Where we say black, what it means is no color. And so it leaves it unlit. But you can't, you can't leap about these. They're not individually addressable like that. You have to address the whole strip in one go. So I don't really want to go into all the details about this. You can have a look at it. If there's anything in here that you think, oh, that looks interesting, but I don't understand how it works, by all means, put a question on the video at the bottom. But uh, I think we'll leave that there, to be quite honest. Now, as the MPU 6050 is such a versatile unit, you may well want to build this in with more than one axis. So, you know, axes, uh, the Y axis, so basically left and right rather than up and down. Um, or indeed the Z axis, which is the spin orientation, really, isn't it? The yaw. So, there we are, pretty interesting really, and more to the point for the price of one pound, what was it, one pound 38 I believe it was, I mean you can't really grumble at that can you, just, just for a bit of experimentation anyway, um, oh yes I've got it on screen here, so it was uh, anyway, one pound 28 in fact, even cheaper, so just grab one and play about with it, as I say if you use exactly the same calculations there from dupe you'll be able to do pretty much what I've done, and if you want to get really into it, if you've got quadcopters or drones of some kind then you can follow his two videos and make it something very special so there we are there's a lot of power there for very little money i believe in my view so there we are i hope that was a good introduction it was quite fun to do quite a bit of work getting the leds lit up actually and understanding some of dupes code but it was it was good fun so i hope you found it's the same and uh, thank you very much for watching see you in the next video I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.